Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. If you and your partner are struggling to have a baby, you're not alone. According to the National Institutes of Health, 15% of couples in the United States are infertile, having trouble conceiving. Infertility is defined as not being able to get pregnant despite having frequent unprotected sex for at least one year. There are several factors that can affect fertility in both men and women, but fortunately there are also many safe and effective therapies that can improve your chances of getting pregnant. Here to discuss infertility is Dr. Elizabeth Stewart. Dr. Stewart is Division Chair of Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Stewart. Thank you for the invitation. Dr. Abby Stewart, nice to see you. Good you know, so one out of six couples in the United States trying to have a child and can't, but you can help. You can, and I think um, that it's a terribly important disease. I think that's the first thing uh, that's important to acknowledge is that it is defined by the World Health Organization, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, as a disease. It's really? not a lifestyle problem. It's a disease, and it's as important as making sure that people don't have unwanted pregnancies. Hmm. So I think the goal now is with family planning, not only to avoid having a child when you are not ready for one, but to optimize your chance of having one when the time is right for you. All right, common causes. Um, and if you wouldn't mind listing them both in terms of uh, problems with women and with men, because it's both, right? Right. Um, so I think that's the first thing is that male infertility is as common as female infertility. So uh, about a third of the time uh, a woman is identified to have a factor, about a third of the time the man is, and, um, some t and about a third of the time both. Um, have identifiable causes. That surprises me, actually. And we used to always blame it on the women. Oh, that's think? what <laughs> I really did. I thought that it was uh, more it likely for the woman to have problems. Well, I think the woman more likely goes for evaluation. Uh -huh. um, and I think also <laughs> that our, most of our therapies are aimed at improving female function. There are some procedures like in vitro fertilization where we can better use sperm, uh, but we don't have as many therapies to help men increase their sperm count. Hmm. So if a couple comes into you uh, with an infertility problem, what testing is involved? How do you find out what's wrong and, and whose guy has the problem? Well, first you want to start with the history because, again, um, if people have had um, serious medical illnesses, chemotherapy, radiation, um, that may point you in the direction of a cause. For women, um, that um, failure to ovulate regularly is one of the more common and easily solvable problems. So if you have irregular periods, um, that's an easy thing to target. Uh, if you come in and you have 12 or 13 periods a year versus coming in and saying, well, my last one was nine months ago, mm -hmm. um, that points you in a specific direction. Women can also have problems with blockage of their fallopian tubes. Uh, they can have problems with the uterus um, not being anatomically normal. And with men, um, again, we don't have a lot of fine testing, but we look at a semen analysis. And um, there can be low sperm counts. Uh, there can be low sperm motility. And sometimes there can even be blockages in the reproductive tract so that they're making sperm, but they're not getting where they need to go. Is the fact that uh, people are waiting longer to become parents uh, leading to infertility issues too? It is a factor, but not the only factor. Um, increasing age is um, a problem for both male and female infertility. Uh, with women, unfortunately, it comes a little bit um, earlier. Women uh, tend to start to run into problems in their mid-30s to early 40s, whereas for men, it's a little bit later in life. So what are some common uh, myths or misunderstandings about infertility? Well, I think, um, again, the first myth is that it's not a disease. Uh, the second myth is that there's nothing you can do about it. 
Um, and um, that sometimes uh, a myth is that the only thing you can do is high-tech fertility treatment, like in vitro fertilization. Uh, sometimes um, it involves correcting um, hormonal abnormalities, so starting on medication can be an effective treatment option. Sometimes just even education and timing um, intercourse optimally can be an option for many couples. Before we talk about the treatments available, and I, and I know you have several, who pays? If a couple is infertile and they have good health insurance, does the health insurance company usually pay for infertility treatment not, and evaluation? Not always. Um, most of the time, uh, health insurers will pay for evaluation, uh, but they don't always pay for treatment. Mm -hmm. And that's something that varies very much state by state and insurer by insurer. There are states where the state law mandates that you treat infertility just like you would hypertension or diabetes, uh, but those states are pretty few and far between. Because it can be really expensive. It can you, be, but yeah. again, sometimes um, a $10 prescription to help a woman ovulate um, more normally uh, can be all that it takes. Uh, sometimes correcting a woman's thyroid function, which has benefits in terms of her energy level and other um, body functions, uh, can be the difference between conceiving and not conceiving. So let's talk about the most common cause of infertility in a female and in a male and the treatment for those. Yeah. So as I said before, um, problems with ovulation are the most common uh, cause of uh, fertility problems in women, um, and that can take several forms. Uh, there's a syndrome called polycystic ovarian syndrome, where women tend to have irregular periods and can also have uh, symptoms of high androgen levels, like um, abnormal hair growth or acne. Too or much flimskin. testosterone? Well, it's not always <laughs> testosterone. It can be other androgens. Okay. But um, again, um, that's um, a medication-related issue. Um, so again, sometimes uh, a very expense, inexpensive prescription can help her to ovulate more normally. Uh, for men, uh, it's usually a low sperm count. And again, uh, sometimes uh, that is something that uh, requires uh, medication to treat. Sometimes uh, even lifestyle changes can make a difference. High temperatures affect sperm. So if, if uh, the guy is spending all of his extra time after work in the sauna, uh, that could be an issue. Or men that take androgens for bodybuilding can actually inadvertently shut off their sperm production. What kind of support is there for people who struggle with infertility? Uh, there are organizations that specialize in support. Uh, one of the ones that's nationwide is an organization called Resolve. Uh, there's also um, a lot of internet-based um, um, networking and counseling, um, and uh, that there are good sources of information. So again, sometimes it's such a private issue, couples hesitate to go in and talk about these things uh, with the doctor. So the, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine gives you a great um, outline of, of uh, fertility causes and lifestyle things that you can do, um, because this is a very personal issue for many couples. Once you identify a couple that an infertility is a problem, how successful are you? What percentage of couples that come into you and are unable to conceive can you get a conception? Can you get let them have a baby? Get them to have a yeah, baby. Yeah, most most people you can help. Uh, again, they are very so the majority, huh? Uh, well, probably even closer to seventy percent. Wow. I think again, it varies uh, very much by cause um, and um, what kinds of treatment you're willing to pursue. So infertility is common, but the treatment is quite successful. It is. And finally, what research is being done? What advances are being made? There are a lot of advances. Uh, even within my lifetime uh, in practice, there have been couples where they've come to us and we've told them uh, there's nothing we can do for them. And then within uh, five years or 10 years, there's been revolutionary new treatments that uh, when I first started practice, um, 
the peak success rate for in vitro fertilization was about 10% per cycle. Now good candidates can get up to 70% pregnancy rates wow. per cycle. Wow. So you're much more successful than you were and hopefully will be much even more successful in the future. Agree. And I think, again, also protecting your fertility, preventing infertility is also um, a key issue for many younger uh, men and women. All right, Dr. Abby Stewart, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Dr. Stewart is the Division Chair of Reproductive Endocrinology and Fertility at Mayo Clinic.